The John Morris Show, episode 74. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother... Hey there, my name's John Morris. I'm a former U.S. Army veteran turned freelance web developer. And my goal for you at this podcast is twofold. First, I want to help you learn how to code. Second, I want to help you turn that code into a full-time living. Because if you're like me, what you want is the freedom, the satisfaction, and the income that you get from being a high-profile web developer. So if that's you, be sure to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, or YouTube so you never miss an episode. You can find all my past episodes and get subscribed at johnmorrisonline.com slash John. Morris show. Also, as you get value from the show, consider becoming a supporting listener on Patreon because you'll help keep the show free for everyone and you'll get access to exclusive courses, source code, and Q&A sessions available only to supporting listeners. Visit johnmorrisonline.com slash Patreon, that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N, to become a supporting listener. All right, let's get into this episode. Hey, everybody, welcome back to the John Morris Show, johnmorrisonline.com. I am your host, John Morris. It is Tuesday, April 26th. Got this one going here early in the morning, so I'm on track for you to get this out in a timely fashion. That's always good. All right, so today I want to talk about what to do when learning web development gets hard and the advice that I learned while I was in the military from one of my drill sergeants. So now I don't remember how far into the road march we were. I just know that we started marching before the sun came up in the morning and we finally stopped after the sun came, had gone down at night. Uh, If you don't know, in the military, road marching is kind of a badge of honor and people like to talk, oh, we did a we did a 10-mile road march for basic, or we did a 20-mile road march. By the time you get done going around the circle, people telling their little war stories, there were people doing 100-mile 100, 100 road marches in basic training, which obviously <laughs> isn't true at all. But I actually have no idea how, how long we marched that day. I just know we marched all day. And as we were getting to the end, my knees were throbbing, my back felt like it was about to snap and i remember the the straps from the rucksack so you you strapped on like a again this is another thing that uh tends to get embellished you know people walking around with 300 pound rucksacks marching 100 miles for their for their basic training i, I think we were it was 40 or 60 or something like that i don't remember anyway i remember having worn that ruck stra- uh, rucksack all day the straps felt like they were sl- they felt like they were slicing through my shoulders. They had nice thick straps on them, but after wearing that thing all day, it just starts to wear down on you. And I I remember literally every part of me wanted to quit. There were several times throughout the road march that I just I just wanted to be done. And there were people that fell out. There were people who just said, screw it, I'm done. And they fell out. And you ended up having to go back and do the road march again if you did that. If you fell enough times, then you would get recycled and you have to start basic training all over again. So it was a pretty big deal. The road march was kind of a required part of of basic training that you had to get through. But and so I, I was, you know, there are times where I was at the point where I wanted to quit. But I remember the advice that our drill sergeant had given us before we all started that day. And what he said was, he said at some point, you're going to want to quit. At some point, it's going to get so difficult, you're going to want to fall out. The thing to do, the thing to remember, is to just focus on taking that very next step. And remember, and they did this a lot. They remind us of this a lot. We had um one of the drill sergeants that we had was a Green Beret who'd been to several different overseas adventures and so forth. And so he had been in actual combat. Which, when I went through basic training, that was actually a little bit more rare 
just because of the time we hadn't been, you know, the United States hadn't been to a war in a long time or for a while at that point. And so to have someone with actual combat experience was a little bit more rare. So he'd actually had combat experience. And so he would always say, this is basic combat training. It's training for combat. And so he said, focus on that next step. And remember, in a real road march, if you're doing this for real, if you stop, you die. And I remember that that really hit me because when you're at basic training, it's easy to get caught up in the kind of just get through this, just do what they're saying to do and so forth and forget what you're actually doing. Forget what you're actually training for. And I think that happens to us a lot in life, or it can happen to us, where we forget what what we're actually doing, the the path that we're actually on, and why we're we're here putting in all of this effort. So I remember as the sun set, as we were marching, and my body was screaming at me to quit. That was the only thing, remembering what he said, that kept me going. I remember specifically there were moments where I felt like I was starting to to get a little bit not necessarily unconscious, but I was starting to lose my head <laughs> a little bit. And the only thing that kept me, that got me through it was I kept just every left step, you know, because we marched all the time in cadence. We just say left, left. So I just, I did that in my head, just repeated in my head. And like sometimes the only thing that I could, the only thing that I can remember that I, I was aware of was me saying left in my head. To, to get me through this road march. And so I, I bring all this up because there will be times for you when learning how to code will get hard. And there will be times, you may have already experienced them, when you will want to quit. But you have to remember why you're here doing this. It's about escaping Maybe that nine to five job that you hate that you're working right now. Maybe for you, it's about working on things that really matter. I know for me, that was a big thing. I had had probably, I had been involved in two or three successful careers before I got into coding. I'd been, you know, I had a good military career. I had had a lot of success uh, in sales in one area. And then I would went to sales on another area and it had had success. I I had had uh, successful careers that I could have continued to pursue, but I didn't feel like I was doing anything that mattered. And when I work on projects for coding and so forth, I absolutely do. And so maybe for you, it's about working on things that matter. Or maybe it's about your family or your future family and the time that you get to spend with them, the way that you can provide for them and so forth. I... My youngest son is four. He's not in school yet. And so he stays home with me every day. The fact that I can work from home, make my living, you know, provide for my family, yet I'm here with my son every day. That means a lot to me. So maybe that's what it is for you. Or maybe it's about controlling your own destiny, not being beholden to, beholden to some employer. You being able to call the shots. And work on the things that you want to work on. And so you have to remember that that's why you're here. That's the goal that you're pushing towards. And if you stop, if you quit, if you give up, that dream dies. Now, I've rarely felt better in my life. I have felt better, but I've rarely felt better than I did. When we ended with that road march, we finally reached our destination. And at the end of it, there was a big bonfire and a victory celebration waiting for us. That was one of the most, one of the strongest feelings of accomplishment that I felt in my life. Because it was a very, very difficult day. And to actually make it through and be part of what by the end of the day was a smaller group of people who actually made the entire march, it felt good. So just remember that the path that you're on now is important. 
it matters, not just to you, but to others, the people that you'll affect, your family, the clients you work with, the companies you work at. I mean, the kind of technology that you're working with is the future. It's the, it's the present and the future of what our world's going to look like. So it absolutely matters, which means it's not always going to be easy. But if you focus on that very next step in front of you, and you remember those words, you stop, you die, then you can get through the tough times and you can reach that final destination where coding suddenly becomes easy, where you get to earn your living doing it, and where the projects that you work on, you're actually proud of. You just gotta keep moving. Now that said, you don't have to make it super hard on yourself. It doesn't have to be ultra, ultra difficult and and harder than it needs to be. It's already hard enough. Let's not make it harder than it needs to be. And I believe that getting the right instruction from the right people can lower the learning curve and help you turn coding into your full-time career much, much faster. And so... I constantly recommend and tell people, and smart developers do, use Rob Percival's Complete Web Developer course to do just that. Now, I've got you an exclusive 25% discount on that course. You can go to johnmorrisonline.com slash CWDC. That's short for Complete Web Developers course, CWDC. And you can get the discount link for that course. And it'll teach you the entire foundation that you need to get going with this quickly. So if you're all about speed, if you, if you want to get there fast and learn everything that you need to know to be able to start doing this as a living, johnmorrisonline.com slash CWDC. All right, that'll do it for this episode. Thank you for listening. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate all your comments and your feedback. And I'll talk to you tomorrow.